some of you had asked if it were possible to do ortho mosaics with PhotoScan Standard Edition, and I have done that before, and I want to demonstrate what you need to do here. Now, ultimately, it's not going to be as good and as high resolution as the Professional Edition, but it is a good way to get started for a reasonable amount of money. And this will be based off the images that I've shared in previous videos. I'll put the link below. There are 345 images from a recent aerial mission and we're going to stitch them together and create an ortho mosaic with PhotoScan. I've downloaded these images from my Dropbox account to my local machine. I'm running a Mac. In my last video I made a misstatement that PhotoScan only runs on Windows. It actually runs on Mac and that's what I'm going to be demonstrating today. So these are the images and keep in mind that all of these are geotagged but with PhotoScan Standard Edition it will not make use of those. You can see that has a latitude and longitude. There's the photo and the ultimate location of the photo. But what we will do is we'll create the ortho mosaic and then we'll geo-reference them in QGIS as I've demonstrated in a previous video. I'm not going to go through all the details. I'll put a link below, but I'll give a high-level overview of geo-referencing this image. I'm in PhotoScan with the empty project. Now let's go ahead and add our photos to the project. I'll go in here and basically select all of them. You can see the load as thumbnails down below. You'll get a nice little preview of each. You can see our thumbnails are loaded and they're loaded as 345 independent cameras. Now what we'll do next is we'll go to the workflow menu and select align photos. Now what I normally do here is I'll select medium accuracy and then pair pre-selection I'll do generic and if I find out that hey, things need to be tightened up a little bit, I'll go back and do high for accuracy, but medium will allow it to go a little bit quicker. So we'll click OK, and we'll let this process go. Now this will take some time, so normally I'll minimize, put it in the background, leave it, and come back to it. Now the initial part of the alignment process is done. Now it's selecting pairs. It gives us an estimate of time, about 18 minutes left and overall progress. So when aligning photos, it's going to start off detecting points, then selecting pairs. Now it's moved on to the matching points process. It says we have about 15 minutes left here and our overall progress is a little bit over halfway done. Now that PhotoScan is done matching points, you can see it's moved on to estimating scene structure. We're about an hour into the entire process. Now when the photo alignment is done, you'll see that we have a sparse point cloud. Now one thing I'll caution you guys is that a lot of times when I don't have any sort of geo-reference to imagery or ground control points, PhotoScan will have my model upside down, so just keep that in mind. So here you can actually see where the plane took off and the camera was taking photos, and then you can kind of follow it around this path, and you can see that it generated the sparse point cloud from those and you'll notice also that if we select these photos it'll show us where in the sequence for example right here these photos show up so to get to this point it took about an hour and a half but pretty easy to do I'm gonna close out these thumbnails and turn off my cameras and now you can see clearly our model so what we'll do next is I'm going to go to our workflow menu and you'll see that it's going to build our mesh geometry next so I'll go ahead and click that. Now what you want to do here is for aerial photography like we're working with you want to choose height field and then polygon count I normally put that at medium and then click OK. You'll see that the mesh is now being generated. This is our mesh nothing too appealing you can see the 3D model here. Now what we'll do next is I'll go back to the workflow menu and we're going to build the actual texture. And for mapping mode I put that at ortho photo, definitely mosaic and leave the default texture size count and then click OK. Now you can see our textured model that process didn't take too long about five minutes and what's cool is you can actually look at the different views. There's a shaded solid wireframe and the textured. Now one thing I did not do is build the dense point cloud. That's something you can do. You can actually export 
the model as well as your dense cloud points and be able to open those in another program. You can also edit them in here, but the goal of this video is to demonstrate creating the ortho mosaic. Now what we'll do is we'll export our texture. What you can do is go to tools, export, export texture, and you have two options. I've already exported both a TIFF and a JPEG. Now I actually prefer the TIFF because if you look at the JPEG, you'll see that the areas that it couldn't construct, it'll blur those out. But with the TIFF, it will actually make those transparent. That's what we want to bring into QGIS to do the geo-referencing. Here is the TIFF that we exported from Photoscan. It's geo-referenced. Now, I did a previous video that walked through in extensive detail how to use this plugin, so I'll put a link below. If you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. And here are the reference points that I created in this image on a being aerial. Now, you'll notice that these actually should be over here, and that's just a little bug with this plugin as you zoom in and out your points don't always maintain their location. So that's ready. I'm gonna go ahead and create the transformation here. So we'll use the default settings. I'll export, I'll just call it geo-referenced and then click save. Okay, and now you'll see that the geo-referencing begins. After geo-referencing, I have it automatically set up to overlay onto our base map and you can see that things line up and look pretty good. See here's our old imagery and here's the new imagery out of Photoscan. So what I'll do next is I will use the GDAL tools to convert this to a PNG and then generate tiles. Now here's the output of the GDAL tools. You can see that our imagery is overlaid on a Google Streets view. I'll switch to hybrid and zoom in. And you'll notice a little bit of transparency. By default, the output of these tools gives you a bit of transparency, but you can see that it's nicely overlaid on this Google map. And let me just show what I've done. I've actually, this is a previous run that I did with Pix4D, and you can see that I've added this layer that's the same imagery but process using Photoscan standard version. So I'll go ahead and turn that layer on and you can see that we're pretty close to having it geo-referenced just like Pix4D did automatically. This is our output that we just geo-referenced using QGIS. And you can see that the imagery is very similar. Now you'll notice just a little bit of rotation. That probably is an artifact of my geo-referencing. I didn't spend a whole lot of time so you'll see this road is a little bit out of alignment, but if you were to spend a fair amount of time geo-referencing, you could get these images to line up perfectly. So I just wanted to share that process of using Photoscan Standard Edition to take your imagery and stitch it together and ultimately create a geo-referenced ortho mosaic that can be overlaid on Google Maps. And you can do this with a little bit more work, but definitely at a fraction of a cost of what you would pay for either Pix4D Professional or Photoscan Professional Edition. So be sure to check the description below for links to all of the images, as well as a link to the imagery overlaid on Google Maps. From start to finish, the process took about two hours. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.